Today, we become legends. While Smite can be a fairly easy game to get into at a basic level due to the third person camera and WASD controls, there are a lot of mechanics in the game that are lesser known or hidden entirely from the player. These mechanics range from the very useful to the almost useless, but I thought I'd make a video on how some of the internal mechanisms of Smite work. So first up we have one that is less useful but more so just interesting and that's how attack speed actually works. Most people just assume that 10% attack speed gives you plus 0.1 on your attacks per second and I don't blame you if you thought this was how it worked, but the reason attack speed is listed as a percentage and not a flat number is because it actually works as a percentage of your base attack speed of your god. For most gods this is at all very close to 1.0 which is where the myth that 10% attack speed equals plus 0.1 comes from, but certain gods technically do benefit from attack speed more or less than other gods. For example Agni has a base 1.0 attack speed whereas AMC only has 0.95 so in reality Agni benefits from attack speed 5% more than AMC, a hunter does. For every 10% these gods buy, Agni gets the full 0.1 where AMC only gets 0.95. Of course, don't go building full attack speed Agni because of this and the vast majority of the time this discrepancy will mean nothing in comparison to the gods kit and playstyle, but I thought it was interesting. Next up is protections, which is a fairly well known formula. The damage you take is of course mitigated by your protections, but by how much? Well, this formula is how the game calculates damage taken. This is set up so that 100 protections halves damage taken. Since we sub in 100 and the equation simplifies to 100 over 200 or 1 half, at 200 prots, 1 third, at 300, 1 quarter, and so on. This equation technically trends towards zero damage taken as you increase your protections, with infinite protections leading to zero damage taken, but since they're capped at 325 in Smite, aside from some cases that can overcap, you'll never reach zero damage taken just from protections. Mitigations also exist which apply multiplicatively with protections, so once you know your damage taken after protections, just multiply it by one minus your mitigations to get total damage taken. Effective health is also worth talking about when discussing protections since prots inherently have diminishing returns as you buy more. Your first 100 prots reduces damage taken by 50%, then your next 100 only reduces it by a further 17% down to one third. When you take health into the picture though, things change a little bit. Say you have 2000 health and no prots, it takes 2000 damage to kill you. Simple, right? Well, now let's say you have 100 prots, you take 50% damage, so it takes 4000 raw damage to kill you. Your effective health is doubled. Gain another 100 prots for 200 total and you take one third damage, aka it now takes 6000 raw damage to kill you. Simply put, for every 100 protections you get, your actual health is added to your effective health. While this isn't diminishing returns, it is still diminishing efficiency, as your effective health doesn't go up by the same percentage every time, but by the same flat amount every time. So gaining the first 100 prots doubles your effective health, while gaining the next 100 only increases that value by 50%, but you're still gaining the same base amount every time. So while protections in themselves have diminishing returns, aka every protection point after the first gives you less and less mitigation, effective health has diminishing efficiency, as the amount of effective health gained by each protection point after the first remains constant, but in relation to your total pool of effective health, the percentage increase gets less and less. If all that math went over your head, the TLDR is that buying more protections makes you tankier at the same flat rate. You're not getting less value, but you're getting a smaller percentage increase on your initial tankiness. Just a quick mechanic fact up next, and that is that magical gods inherently deal 120% damage to structures, while physicals inherently deal 85%. This leaves a 35% spread between the two, and is in place mostly to stop hunters deleting towers instantly, and allow mages, which a vast majority are ability based, to actually hit towers somewhat effectively. This of course leads to outliers like the magical ADCs which shred towers like a hunter but get the 120% damage number instead of 85%. Next up, some quick notes on lifesteal. Firstly, healing via lifesteal works based on the actual damage dealt, not the pre-mitigation damage. You also can over lifesteal, aka if you kill an enemy, you only heal based on the health they had left, not the total damage. Physical lifesteal by default only works on basic attacks, whereas magical lifesteal works on abilities as well. However, there is an AoE lifesteal coefficient applied to magical abilities of one third, so any ability that can hit multiple targets, regardless of if it actually does when you fire it, will heal one third of the normal value. 
So basically, you need to hit three enemies to get back to break even with normal lifesteal. This mechanic applies to the vast majority of abilities in the game. Very few are actually truly single target. For those curious about Scylla's 1, which is technically single target, but hits three targets at max rank, this used to lifesteal for full value on all three targets, but has since been patched, so it now only lifesteals from the initial target hit and not the splash damage. However, physical ability lifesteal doesn't suffer this same effect. Soul Eater works at full value, as does the passive effect from Jotun's Vigor, regardless regardless of if the ability used is AoE or not. But moving on, let's talk about movement speed. In Smite, movement speed works the same way as attack speed, and that is given as a percentage, and that percentage is applied to your god's base movement speed at level 0. This means higher base speed gods get a little bit more value from building movement speed than lower base speed gods do. But also like attack speed, it's usually not worth considering when crafting a build as the difference is pretty negligible even between the slowest and fastest base speed gods in the game. Movement speed also has diminishing returns in the form of two soft caps. From 0 to 457 movement speed, don't ask me why it's so specific, any increases apply as normal. For practical purposes on most gods, you can gain around 25% movement speed in bonuses before you hit this soft cap, with a slight variance either way depending on your god's base movement speed. After hitting this first soft cap at 457, any future MS increases are only 80% of the normal benefit, so buying 10% movement speed actually only yields 8% in practice. This first soft cap ends at 540 movement speed, and with the 20% reduced effectiveness taken into account, it takes an additional 28% movement speed to reach the 540 soft cap. So to hit this second soft cap, you need a total of 53% movement speed applied to your god. The initial 25 with no DR and the 28% with DR. This situation won't happen often, but is possible in real matches through abilities and relics that provide strong movement speed buffs in combination with some items that do too. Beyond this second soft cap at 540, all future future MS increases are only half as effective as normal, which is where you really start to lose out on a lot of potential value. A lot of this is more so just interesting than useful, but I think knowing that roughly your first 25% movement speed is full value, then your next 25-30% to is only 80% value, and after that it's all half value. This could be useful when considering builds and relics in game. First 25% you're completely fine, next 25% is still good but reduced, beyond that you're getting way less value. Sticking with speed for a second though, just a quick mention to the basic attack, backpedal and strafe movement penalties. Each of these actions comes with a varying penalty to movement speed listed here. Only the strongest penalty applies, so for example if you are a melee god basic attacking while strafing you only suffer a 35% penalty, not 20% and 35%. However if you start backpedaling while doing this your penalty goes up to 40% as it's now the largest one affecting you. This also means that ranged gods basic attacking move at the same speed regardless of if they're moving forward, backward or strafing. This is applied in game most in the ADC role where you can backpedal while basic attacking the enemy and even though they're moving forward and you're moving backward you both suffer the same movement penalty, just 50% from ranged basic attacking. But since they're moving towards you, they run into your basic attacks while you move backwards out of range of theirs. If the backpedal penalty still applied in this case, you would move much slower than the enemy and still get hit. On the topic of slows, they are also subject to diminishing returns by this formula, but only for slows greater than 40%. Slows add together with a few exceptions. Only the strongest item slow applies, and relic slows don't stack with themselves, but will stack with items and abilities. God abilities stack with everything. Other than that, all slows add together and then go through this DR formula. Plugging in a 100% slow into this outputs 62.5%, so that is the effective hard cap for slows in Smite. Regardless of how many stack, you will never be slowed more than 62.5%. The only exceptions to this rule are the ramp to root and ramp to stun CCs, which reduce your speed to zero before rooting or stunning you, but technically these aren't slows, they're just different forms of roots and stuns. There is also a speed flaw of 150 that slows can never take you below, but this is extremely rare in game. Using the base average movement speed of 365 again, we can see that you'd need a 59% slow to get someone with no movement speed buffs down to that floor. That's equivalent to an initial slow before DR of 90%. Speaking of DR though, let's quickly discuss hard CC DR, which fairly recently became a visible mechanic to players. I know a lot of you might already know about this given the fanfare it received when it became a visible mechanic, but basically every hard CC that hits you applies a DR stack. Each stack reduces future hard CC durations by 20% with a max of 4 stacks or 80% reduction. Stacks last 15 seconds and refresh in duration when another is applied. This DR only affects hard CCs, not soft CCs like slows, and there is also a specific category of hard CCs called true hard CCs, which consists of knockups, knockbacks, grabs, banishes, polymorphs and pulls. These CCs aren't reduced by DR, but do apply two stacks instead of one. 
Abilities with multiple hard CCs within them will apply DR stacks for each one. DR stacks with crowd control reduction, but the CCR applies first. However, no hard CC can ever be reduced under 0.4 seconds by either of these effects. Just a quick cool little fact here that isn't really applicable, but nice to know. Minions don't have protections. They instead start with 10% damage mitigation, which increases by 1% every one minute of game time. So at 30 minutes in, they have 40% damage mitigation. I'm not actually sure where this caps out since it must do at some point. Otherwise, if the game goes longer than an hour and a half, the minions become literally invincible to damage because they have a hundred percent damage mitigation. And since mitigations can't be countered by penetration or true damage, they are literally invincible. That's also a noteworthy point though, any penetration you build or gain doesn't help you against minions, but it does help you against jungle camps since they do have protections. Fitting since assassins get free penetration and are mainly junglers. Another quick one here that probably 90% of people watching already know about, but there's a mechanic in Smite called backdoor protections in place, in which structures take half damage if there are no enemy minions in range. When a minion enters tower range, these are removed and you do full damage as long as minions remain there and for 5 seconds after the last one leaves. And the final mechanic of this more widely known quickfire round is XP split mechanics. When solo farming a minion or jungle camp, you get 100% of the base XP value. When splitting that farm with others, you split a total of 120% between you all. So duo splitting is 60% each, triple splitting is 40% each, quad split is 30%, and splitting between all five is 24% each. This generally leads to the conclusion that duo splitting is a good idea since you increase the total farm gained by 20%, but when splitting with three or more, the amount each player gets is so small that you're usually better off each farming something else on the map individually. As for gold, this is evenly split with no bonus, so double splitting gives 50% gold to each player. Last hitting increases gold by 50% though, but that is only on the last hitter's share of the gold. Meaning solo last hitting is 150% of total gold, duo split last hitting is only 125% total, and so on. But those are some of Smite's hidden mechanics that aren't really shown to players explicitly, but can impact the game a lot. Hopefully you enjoyed and or learned something from this video, and I'll catch you guys in another one later on. Have a great day, and peace out, you nerds.